what do we know about the prevention of Alzheimer's disease? So again, we started with a very bold hypothesis, which we were not alone in, but most people thought was crazy, which was that these diseases have some degree of prevention. There is a way to prevent these to some extent, maybe not completely, but luck is not the only thing or bad luck is not the only thing that is driving these diseases. We have some control. And so to make a very long story short, after Dan kind of went through all of this analysis and after analysis, after analysis, the thing that stood out above everything else was the benefit of exercise. And I just sort of told Dan to go back to the drawing board. I was kind of like, Dan, I think you screwed this analysis up, buddy. Like <laughs> there's zero chance that exercise is actually the best thing here. Like, are you going to now tell me that chicken soup is the best thing for colds? Like I wanted some insight here. I didn't want some stupid platitude, right? But it turned out Dan was right and I was wrong. So I, I, think, I think the data are pretty unambiguous. You know, in fact, I'm doing a podcast on this. I don't know. By the time this one's out, it might be out. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But, but I've got a podcast coming out on sort of, you know, brain health. And here we are back again now with, you know, many more analysts and much more tools at our disposal to kind of understand the literature. And still exercise remains the most important modifiable behavior we have to reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease and probably Parkinson's and Lewy body dementia, by the way. So I can't say that for every single neurodegenerative disease, right? I can't, I don't have any real insight into how you prevent Lou Gehrig's disease, which is an absolutely horrific disease that is fortunately much more rare. But when it comes to the big three, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and Lewy body dementia, exercise, exercise, and exercise matter. And part of that has to do with movement reserve. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you think about Lewy body and Parkinson's, these are primarily movement disorders, right? So they're kind of on a spectrum, right? So you've got Parkinson's at one end, pure movement disorder, a little bit of cognitive, Lewy body kind of a bit of both, and then Alzheimer's much more cognitive. Having a higher movement reserve and having a higher cognitive reserve are protective. What do you mean by movement reserve? Just greater range of motion, ability, so spectrum of movement patterns that they yes. can sustain? Greater physical capacity, right? So... You know, people who are really good dancers, who are really good at doing complicated, coordinated, problem-solving things with their body, who have kinesthetic awareness, they're going to have a much slower decline even when diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, for example. Hmm. So we want our cognitive reserve high, we want our movement reserve high. And then on the other side of that, you get the sort of kind of hormonal vascular metabolic benefits that come from the actual exercise. So one is the benefits you get from being in the state. One is the benefits you get accruing the state. Mm. Could you expand a bit on the hormonal effects and otherwise? I mean, I think this is probably just because it has <laughs> words in the acronym that I like, but brain-derived neurotrophic factor, et cetera. I mean, to what extent can you weight some of these factors? Yeah, I don't know that I could tell you a relative weighting, but certainly BDNF is a very important one. So it's a very important, you know, growth factor for neurons. But also, of course, when you think about the metabolic effects and the hormonal effects that come from what is exercise doing to cortisol levels? What is exercise doing with glucose and insulin levels? I mean, we, we see an unbelievably strong association between type 2 diabetes and Alzheimer's disease. Well, mm -hmm. again, here's an example of where medicine 3.0, I think, gives you a little bit more confidence to make the extension, which is, look, if type 2 diabetes is bad, having insulin resistance without type 2 diabetes is also probably bad. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we want to take all steps possible to maximize insulin sensitivity, glucose disposal, all of these things that fit under the bucket of metabolic health. And again, exercise is not unique in its ability to act on those things. Nutrition absolutely does as well. But boy, does exercise have a profound effect on those things.